So I start. Uh, I hope this time my first workshop was totally black in the middle. I hope this one will work better. Uh, I will talk about extruders and my way of making extruders. My name is Jon Linda. Uh, I do normally a program called Marlin 3D Print Tool, which is a help tool to create better, um, cap, uh, better um, calibration of your printer. I will start talking about the parts. Um, I hope that everyone is familiar with the nozzle, that, that small part at the end. There's nothing fancy about it, but it, this is actually a, a, it was a, a printout from, from uh, E3D that I just took the carbon copy and made a SL just for, for showing you. The difference between parts that are well designed and Chinese knockoffs, or whatever you can call them, is that they are ex the nozzle is it's not just a piece of brass. It's the part that if it's wrong designed, you will get problems. And it's I have my the nozzle has been working for month. I never changed. I can still use the original ones. So buying cheap ones is, uh, is uh, not not a it's not worth the money because they are cheap enough. The heat block. This is I have e 3 d heat block here. That is a cop copy of the same. I don't think it's actually it's actually totally the same, but no most. This part must be tight enough to heat, to have the heat cartridge inside, and the holes here for the um, thermistor must be, there is different solutions, uh, but the important thing is I normally take a little bit of uh, thermal compound on the thermistor to get contact between the thermistor, which is smaller than the hole, and the heat block. Um, and then whatever mounting there is, like the old one with a screw and fiddling with it, or the PT100 element, it's almost the same. Uh, it must be good thermal uh, tra transfer from the, um, um, the sensor to the heat block. If you don't have that, or if the thermistor will come out of the block, it will be a small disaster because there's nothing to control it. You have uh, Thermal runaway in normal um, so software, but you cannot always rely on it. It's better to do have a good design, a good mounting, and be cautious about having good thermal um, uh, contact with the thermistor. Next part is the heat break. This one is actually done right. Uh, the heat break has one part that is important to, to look at. This narrow part here is the part that uh, on this side should be hot. Is, here is where the hot end sits. And here it, it should be cold. This part must be thin. It must be, uh, the hole inside must be, the better and 
more precise that part is uh, done, and the narrower the wall is, the smaller, thinner the wall is, the better it divides the hot side from the cold side. And here is where the jamming is. And because it's done that way, that is why it's break. So if you buy cheap ones, this is the part which is badly done. Don't buy them. Buy the original one because they are better performed, better done in this part. And, and if you break it, you have mounted the extruder the wrong way because you, you should not break it. That is the most critical part in the heat break. Um, Next part is the cold side. The cold side is just Here's where you put your fan. This side can never be too cold or not in room temperature up to, it cannot be too cold. Um, the colder you get this pot, the better you help the hot, uh, the thermal break, the heat breaker, because if you have that side cold, if it gets warm on this part, somewhere here you get problems with uh, filament melting on cold side. It should be melting down here, not here. So this is the only difference between cold stick filament and floating filament. Okay, this is a small cut through uh, with transparency and when you put in the nozzle you put it in to where the flange is meeting like this one and then you back it out this is important if you don't do that and you screw this down on you must have some force here don't have force here. Back it out and put so it in like this. Is, so this part is flat with this, and there is a gap here. The importance is the gap. Now I have someone from the company that should actually should do this instead of me, but. Uh, So, uh, on this, okay, I put an arrow. This is the important part. You must have a space here. Aluminium and brass has almost the same, when you heat it up, it has almost the same thermal expansion. It's almost the same. But um, it's not the same with solid steel. So, okay. The sample of the uh, cold side, because this was tight, we, we made a gap, tight this together, then we just take some. Uh, thermal compound on the threads here. We don't put in the teflon tube yet. When you have a, a real one like this one, which is, you see that this flange here will be flat with this one. Should be. It's not. Mm -hmm. It should be. Uh, the thermal 
compound would be here. So you put thermal compound on the threads on the heat rate. And this is easy to, I look at this one and it is actually, I took it from your monitor, so it has thermal compound inside. Many skip that. And that is because there is a difference between those, a small difference between the uh, aluminium part and the stainless steel part. And the compound will fill it up. This is what I do next. I heat up the extruder when it is like this. And you see, no fan. What happens when I heat it up? The aluminium will heat up and, and it will expand. The brass will expand almost equal, but the solid stainless steel will not. The uh, compound will cure. If I go back here to this, it will cure the compound here because this heat up, it will create some heat up, and this one will be uh, more or less uh, all, all the the compound will be sticky. It will be uh, yeah. And then I tighten this up about a quarter of a ton. This would mean that this is handhold. And I'll tie this up. This will compress the stainless part the, against the nozzle. And you get perfect uh, thermal uh, transportation from the nozzle to the heat block to the, to the um, thermal heat breaker. Because I do this and then and I cure it hot. Then I pull it down and let. Okay, during the heat up, I have no Teflon tube inside. And that's all? Oh, yes. Uh, I bought the Titan heat break. Uh, does the Titan heat break have different thermal properties compared to a steam one? It has the same purpose. Same purpose, yes, but does it have different thermal properties? The titan or titanium? No, 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 no titanium. Oh, titanium, yes, yeah, it's got uh, lower thermal conductivity. Lower, lower. Yes. Yeah. Because okay. titanium is not, uh, as, uh, trans transport not heat as good as, as uh, copper or brass or stainless steel. Okay. It can, um, yeah. So should should I treat it differently compared to no. a steel one? No, same, no. Thing. same thing. Okay. So you break the heat breaker by using force. Why? Yeah. This That's is right. no force at all. No, I just wanted. Yeah. The thermal thing. So, and why not Teflon inside? Because if I heat up the cold side. Uh, without a fan, just to cure the thermal compound. That is just a preparing stage. And then I normally use a very long drill bit, two millimeters drill bit. I put the Teflon tube on the drill bit and put it inside and put the drill down to the nozzle. Then I know it's straight all the way down to just straightening to get a straight pop. But that is after I have cured the, uh, the cold side. Okay, then I have a question as well. I have a Borden. Yes. Uh, how could I use a drill bit for that? Oh. Because the Teflon is really long. <laughs> You can't. No, you can't. Uh, but 
it's a way of, of uh, aligning where you have direct data. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 